We will be having um, a CSL potluck Thanksgiving on Wednesday. Now, put your ears on. That starts at 6 p.m., okay? The actual dinner starts at 6. I have a sign-up sheet over here, and uh, Nina and Nancy E. are in charge. Do you hear? It's on the camera. Nina and Nancy E. are in charge. <laughs> So if you have questions, you can ask them, but they would love for you to sign up if you're coming so that we can set up enough spaces so that we know if we're having what, what we're having, do they need to supplement uh, some things. So I think it just asks for your name and what you're bringing over there. Super appreciate if you'd sign up. And you can come if you don't sign up. It's okay. We're not going to throw you out. Now, at 7 then, after that Thanksgiving dinner, we have the labyrinth set up up here in the sanctuary. Yeah, so if you have not experienced the labyrinth, um, I really encourage you to do so. Uh, I'm just going to read a small little thing about labyrinth. Uh, labyrinth walking is an ancient practice used by many different faiths for spiritual centering, contemplation, and prayer. Entering the serpentine path of a labyrinth, you walk slowly while quieting your mind. One can also focus on a spiritual question or a prayer. So Dave and Tamara own this uh, labyrinth mat, and it's super high quality, and it's huge. And so they'll have it set up that you can come up after the Thanksgiving dinner and walk the labyrinth for whatever purpose. Uh, you choose, but it is quite an experience. Do you want to say anything about no, that? Not necessarily. I think you said it all. So mm -hmm. we refer to that. We do that just here and there here. So it's a good opportunity to take advantage of the fact that we do it. So that's all happening this Wednesday. 6 p.m. is dinner. 7 p.m. is labyrinth. Um, look at what we have. Can you see what this is? It's a CSL cookbook. Center for 
Spiritual Life Cookbook. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, Joni Fister was in charge of this, and she saw it all the way through. And I'm and and her and I um, went through it a million times. So I'm just going to tell you: if you find a typo, please don't tell us. <laughs> we don't want to know. So just fix it in your book, and just know that we did the best we could. Um, so thank you, Joni, so much for this. These are on sale. They're on sale today. For Chrissy and Sal, so in time for Christmas presents, these are $15 each, um, and they're on sale out here. Tamara will be with the, the little square out there, and there's a little bag. Uh, they're in the lobby in that, what do you call that, hutch there, and we have quite a few of them, so buy up, people. Uh, very good. Thanks, Joni. <laughs> that was a lot of work. That was a lot of work. Uh, okay, I think that's all for the announcements right now. So um, let's just relax here for a moment. Let's just take a deep breath as we start our service, speaking our vision statement together now. This center offers a path for awakening to the realization of oneness. Open hearts, inspired life, empowered love. Our spiritual community welcomes all people to embrace oneness as the truth of our being. Together we see a world of love, peace, and abundance for all. And I will listen for 
and in the sacred stillness. I invite you to join with me as we breathe together this breath of life, this divine essence of the one, the one power, the one presence, the one life that creates all, sustains all, and is all. This breath of life that is so freely given and I am so grateful. For this breath is the life of God, of spirit, of love, of oneness, called by many names, expressing itself as all seen and unseen creation in wholeness, perfection, and completeness. And as I know that I am an active expression of this oneness as its peace its love, its harmony, its joy, its wisdom. I know that this moves in and through and as me, creating my life as a divine expression. And I am unified with all of life. And I know that this is true for each and every life for each of us are united in that fullness of spirit, each a unique and diverse expression of this one divine, ever flowing life. And so today I declare with deep reverence for that holiness of each life, that we see each other as spirit sees, as an expression of love, of the divine itself. And we are grateful for this recognition of spirit in the diversity of life. We are grateful for being a part of the livingness of this magnificent life. And as we feel this divine presence, we know that we are being guided, directed, uplifted, in wondrous ways to a fulfilling life. And we are grateful that the Spirit guides our decisions and all of our affairs surrounding us in its loving light. And that we are unified with all of creation, with each other, that there is no place where this unification is not. And I declare that we are each open and grateful for a yet to be expression of our divine beingness. And for each prayer request and the desires of your heart, I know that the activity of spirit is now at hand, that this fullness of spirit is right in the midst of each desire of each request, revealing the perfect expression of health abundance, wisdom, guidance, and comfort. Each request is being guided and directed to its highest and best expression. And I am so grateful for this blessed gathering, grateful for the volunteers, the congregants, the musicians, for the message, for just everything that comes together for this uplift of upliftment as we experience a greater expression, expression of the divine. And so being grateful for this life that is freely given, being grateful and thankful for the way that we are open to receive all of its abundance I release these words into the law knowing with full confidence that the universe of spirit always says yes, that our word does not come back void as we join together and declare, and so it is.
Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to call your attention to the prayer chest at the bottom of the stairs to the left against the walls. If there is something heavy on your mind, a people in your life, you just want some extra oomph in your life this week, please put your concerns, your desires in the prayer chest and the practitioner will do affirmative prayer on your behalf this week. In ordinary life, we hardly realize that we have received a great deal more than we give, and that it is only with gratitude that life becomes rich. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And from Michael Beckwith, gratitude places you in the energy field of plenitude. Perceiving life in a consciousness of gratitude is literally stepping into another dimension of living. Suddenly, the seeming ordinariness of your days takes on a divine sparkle. That's pretty wise, Michael Beckwith. All right. Uh, let's see. I have no joke, but I have a picture. How about that? <laughs> So that's our new dog, Blue. And when he rides in my car, he insists on riding in the car seat. Isn't that crazy? I, I pull up to the bank, tell, and the teller's like, oh my God, that's the cutest thing ever. I'm like, what? And I look back, and he's in the car seat. He gets it. Well, and there's a baby in there who doesn't get in. But um, anyway, I thought that was good. Thanks. All right. Um, so uh, you can send me strength. I'm going to get through this message. Give it to me. So uh, my, first, my first thought on the title of this message, <clears throat> I first titled it, How Can I Be Grateful When I Was Just Served Up a Big Pile of Shit? Can I say that? <laughs> But instead, my title is Gratitude, the Language of a Healthy Soul. So I'm, in reflecting the title for our whole year of 2023, so you see it every single week, right? It's on everything. My best year because I deserve it. And that, you know, that is so easy to talk about when everything is hunky-dory in your life, right? Yes. But what happens when life gets challenging? It's just not so easy to stay on this, this straight and narrow path that claims all is well, all is perfect, God is good. Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. So what did he mean by that? And maybe he meant something different to every single person. The way he spoke was for each person. It was for everybody to be able to interpret in their own way and probably a lot of different ways throughout your life, depending on where you're at. So right now in this time, I think he means when life gets challenging, we easily fall into believing that 
Only what we experience with our senses is true and real. What we see with our physical eyes, or even what we don't see, or what we can actually touch, or maybe not touch, smell, taste, or hear, is all that is real. Our physicality is in our face always, and this is where most of us live most of the time, in our material thinking. The broad path is perceiving life from this physical perspective only, and it causes us to suffer and feel pain, that road of destruction. In this human perspective, we experience opposites. We experience good and bad, up and down, happy and sad. And all of this is very human. But we are spiritual beings. And unless we acknowledge our spiritual nature, we will not experience everlasting life, that God life, that peace of life, that joy of life. Life with no opposites, only life. So I've been experiencing my humanity lately, <laughs> wondering about life and death. And, you know, I've come across the thought, not my thought, I'm sure, death is not the opposite of life. Birth is the opposite of life. And birth and death are human phenomena. There is no birth and death in spirit. There is only life, the life of God, eternal and forever. Jesus said, God is the God of the living, not the dead. An infinite life principle, like God, would know nothing of death. How could a life principle know anything of death? So I've been having a lot of conversations with Jesus lately. He's fast becoming my best friend and my confidant. And I never really had much of a relationship with Jesus before. I was raised uh, in this philosophy, which a lot of times doesn't really talk about Jesus, but as I read Charles Fillmore, who is the co-founder of Unity, his work, it, it, he bases his whole philosophy of unity on Jesus Christ and the Jesus Christ teachings. And so does Joel Goldsmith, my very favorite writer. And so does Ernest Holmes. All base their work on the, the teachings of Jesus Christ. And in my heart, I believe it doesn't really matter what you call it if you call it Christ consciousness, higher wisdom, divine mind, the universe. But I'm practicing with Jesus. He always answers right away, almost before I call. And he speaks to me in my own voice and language. I can almost think that I'm making it up myself, except he is ever so much more wiser than I am and calm and peaceful and reasonable and always loving. He answers me with phrases like, yo, <laughs> or what's up? <laughs> Things I understand in words I can easily understand, but that I may not have thought of myself. So I've been making promises to Jesus to speak and keep his words in my heart, to share his ideas, not by telling people about them or preaching them, but by living them. He mostly teaches love, but that is a very big subject, as you know, which includes forgiveness and gratitude. So I'm looking up on the internet a little bit and I come across, I'm thinking of gratitude and things for November, and I come across uh, a website called soulshepherding.org. So it says this about gratitude. Thank you are two of the most important words you can say. They are the language of a holy and healthy soul. They usher you right into God's presence. 
They usher you right into God's presence. Go ahead, say it right now. Be ushered in. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get back to our theme for this year. My best year because I deserve it. Notice it does not say my best year ever. Just my best year. Implying that this is the best I can do right now. And that is good enough. Always my best is good enough for the universe never demands perfection. Just the best I can do in the moment. And because it reads my energy, I can't fool Mother Nature. Right? Am I doing and speaking and acting my best? Because I deserve a life where I put my best foot forward. And in return, the universe reciprocates by putting its best foot forward towards me. I get into trouble when I start judging the universe as good or bad or as awesome or shitty, right? If I'm in alignment or in integrity and my thoughts and my words and my actions all agree, then I must assume that the universe is always in integrity and showing up for me accordingly. I'm the one who puts the judgment of awesome or crappy on it. And then I, I react accordingly, complaining or being thankful, suffering or rejoicing. What if I just said thank you to everything that shows up and forgot the judgment? Again, Jesus said, judge not by appearances, but by right judgment. Right judgment, right gratitude, which ushers me right into the presence of God. How easy is that? So now the question how can I be grateful when I was just served up a big pile of shit? How ironic that I chose this theme for 20, or this theme for 2023, and it's turned out to be my most challenging year I can ever remember. But challenging doesn't mean it's not the best. My challenges have caused me to dive deeper than ever before into my spiritual practice. And you'll notice that our yearly theme also includes a year of spiritual practice. So go figure that I have to actually practice what I'm speaking and teaching, or it means nothing at all. So here are my thoughts, some of them from Jesus and some from just little old me. So for those of you who don't know what the heck I'm talking about, here it is. My story goes like this. My daughter gets pregnant and finds out early in her pregnancy, 19 weeks, that's pretty early, that she needs to go on total and complete bed rest so the baby does not come too early due to some cervical issues. Okay, not a lot of details in here. So I start going to her house for 10 hours each day while her husband works and I take care of my daughter and her toddler boy Grady and her six year old Zeke and her home and her dogs. And together we got her to 24 weeks, which is a milestone to be able to deliver a viable fetus. And you know, we, were, we were crazy ecstatic to go to 24 weeks. And after six weeks of taking care of her at her home, she gets admitted to the hospital for total and complete bed rest. Now I'm still caring for her home and children and dogs, except she's not there anymore. She's set up long-term in the hospital until she delivers baby Winona. She makes it to her next milestone, 28 weeks, and then 30. And we're ecstatic when she passes the 31-week mark. And then, on a Friday, her water breaks. But Winona didn't come right away. It was on Sunday morning during a routine monitoring of the baby that they discovered a very low heart rate during an ultrasound and her doctor took her in for an emergency C-section. This emergency C-section was the telephone call that my daughter, who just, my other daughter, who just happened to be there at the time uh, she was visiting my, other, my daughter in the hospital, and she made a call. She knew she wasn't reached me because I'm recording on there. So she called Tamara, who just happened to have her phone on in the front row 
Naughty camera. <laughs> Just happened, right? So she checked it, and it was Zoe. And she thought, if Zoe is calling me during church service, she must need to talk to her mom. Then you all witnessed this. Y'all saw what was going on. I know you were all distracted. So was I. And so I asked Roy to go call Zoe, and he went out and did. And uh, let's see. So we found out she was having this emergency C-section and I decided just to leave right away. I decided just, just to go and be with my baby girl, Haley. She, you know, needed a good mom. But before I left, I got word that Winona was stable and that Haley was recovering. I had no other information about this at all. So, and I just want you to know right here that I have been overwhelmed at the amount of support and love and prayers coming from this community in particular. And Mile High Church, the whole minister staff, people in Tennessee, Donna Miller's groups, and people uh, from, from here that have their own private groups going out. Uh, indeed, Winona was surely everyone's baby. Everyone knew Winona. So thank you for that. Oh, I just ushered into the presence of God. So this long journey has, has taken up a whopping 13 weeks of my 2023. And it ends my daughter and her husband never coming home with a baby. Winona suffered too much brain damage from no heartbeat for too long. She lived for one day. Some of you might not know that. This is not what we were expecting the end to look like. It is very hard to see the gift in this. This is the shit. If I choose to see it that way. And I wonder, like you probably do, do prayers even work? So this is the one question that I asked Jesus, who in my mind is still a vibrant life force energy alive right now. Brenda, he said, you pray for God to fix things that you think are going wrong. And God knows nothing of things going wrong. You pray for better humanhood when you already had been given everything. How much better could God provide than everything? Pray to know God aright. Pray to understand God's ways and trust that everything is already perfect if you only had the eyes to see. Pray for new eyes. Then be grateful that it is already done. Give thanks even though you don't see it. And you may never see it but you will know it by the calm and peace that comes over your heart. So maybe baby Winona needed all of those prayers simply to be lifted to her next adventure. Maybe her journey included a stop in our hearts to quicken each of us to grow our soul just a little bit more. Maybe she was never intended to stay and live out her human life with us here and now. Maybe we needed all of our own prayers to lift ourselves up. No matter the outcome, I am changed. You are changed. We are changed. I don't have any answers <laughs> and I don't need any answers because I can choose to say thank you for this whole terrible experience so I can be ushered right into the presence of God where I can rest and renew and continue to believe that all is well, all is well at a deeper level than ever before. 
I will continue to take the narrow path of gratitude that leads to life eternal. Thank you, one manna, for your sweet, short blessing on earth and your eternal blessing in spirit. Can you feel it? And thank you, God, for opening my eyes to see. So I'm going to end with a quote by Dr. Robert Holden. The miracle of gratitude is that it shifts your perception to such an extent that it changes the world you see.
that have been bestowed upon me. I give thanks for this abundance as I willingly, gratefully share in the circulation, knowing 
that my participation is the hand of God in action and our affirmation. New and rich ideas arise in my mind and I demonstrate prosperity. blessings that circulate to the blessedness of our community, our church, and our world, and so it is. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, in case you don't smell it, it's potluck down there today. <laughs> And because it is the third Sunday, we do have a workshop after potluck. And the workshop will be based around gratitude, of course, and more than just based around it, it is an experiential workshop that includes uh, many gratitude activities for us to actually practice gratitude. So, um, it, yeah, I won't hold you to this, but could I get an idea of how many people might stay for the workshop so I know where to set it up? Okay, so um, we'll, we'll go down, we'll have potluck, we'll clean that up a little bit, and then um, maybe we'll even do the workshop down there because we, we need to make a mess. I need to make a mess. <laughs> so we're going to do a little gratitude work. Crafty ideas. Uh, okay, where are we? Welcome new people. So if you are here for the first time, welcome to CSL. I can't think of a better place to be on a Sunday morning than here with these people. So thank you so much. Uh, welcome. We have potluck. Uh, if you'd like to know anything about the center, um, Tamara is running around here. She also will have the little square that if you'd like to use your debit or credit card for uh, pur purchasing cookbooks, <laughs> uh, paying for anything that we do, tithes, anything we take money for, she can do that. She can also answer questions that you might have uh, about the center, or you could just go down and sit at a table full of people and ask them questions. So uh, welcome if you're new. Credit card prayer requests. So we have this awesome practitioner over here who is a licensed yeah, you talk to him. Was a licensed practitioner of science of mind founded by Ernest Holmes. And uh, she on her own time voluntarily, willingly, and happily accepts our prayer request forms and takes them home on her own time in her spiritual time and prays on our behalf. Um, that is one of the greatest things that we offer as a community here is prayer. And Lou does that for us if you put a prayer request in the box. So down the stairs to the left, all of those prayer requests are kept confidential. Um, so I really encourage you, no matter how small or large your challenge or joyfulness is, 
put it in the prayer chest and let uh, Lou know the truth for you, the truth that everything that you already desire is already within you, perfect, whole, and complete. Sometimes that's hard to see, isn't it? So we turn that over and let Lou see that for us. So thank you so much, Lou, for your service to this center. <laughs> She's so humble, too. I just love her. All right. Uh, Potluck today, the bookstore is open. So if you'd like something in the bookstore, come and grab me. I'm happy to help you um, look for something or, or purchase something. Workshop today. Uh, say hi to the virtual people. Hi, virtual people. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Um, and CSL prom is over. I can scratch that out. How about that? All right. Yeah, but once, once prom king and queen, forever prom king. And we did have a prom king and queen. Jim Carr and Lorette Wright were our prom Woo! king and queen. Oh, yeah. good sports. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I think we are ready to claim our good. All right, so we just are going to say these like we mean them all the way down, all together, one voice, our CSL spirit. Here we go. With a sense of gratitude, I see the world in a new light. Each day is an opportunity and a gift. Today, I am finding ways to be grateful for what I have, while also being excited about what is yet to transpire. I am grateful for another day to make a positive contribution, and so it is. I am the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. Thank you. 